Привет. Hello guys. So, plans are over textured ceilings and our tax ceilings. So, just a quick thing on a space toss here, as you will need to know this. And I'll drop another link to some links that'll help you understand it further. So basically, until the mid 1980s, our tax was made with white asbestos in it, and that was to strengthen it up. And so therefore, our tax will contain asbestos, while our tax applied after 2000, the year 2000, may or may not contain it. Um, so it's also worth noting that it's only dangerous while it's in its powder form like the way I'm scraping it here now and it'll only pose a risk when it's dusty or being sanded, scraped or drilled in um, but like I said if you're not sure you can get tests done and you can call in guys that, that know all about asbestos but I'll drop some links to that in the description but so basically what I do is I scrape it all down if it's safe to do so I scrape down the high spots now the ceiling I'm doing here in particular is safe as it is actually just plastered stipple so there is no no asbestos used in this um, although our tax is a form of plaster but anyway so I get it all scraped down get all the high spots done as low as I can and then I PV it and I break it in sections I sort of break it up into sections I look both ways so when it's shiny I know I've got that area covered um, I'm using a brush here you can use a roller a good heavy texture type of roller as well just to make sure you get into all them hollows grooves and basically I'm brushing it all sorts of different directions to make sure of full coverage um, as the PVM is probably the most fatal part of the ceiling um, or if you want to use blue grit at a day previous that's all well and good but you can see that I'm, I'm not being shy with a good coat of PVA here going in all sorts of directions following the grooves of the, the shape of the swirls here making sure I get into every nook and cranny now that being said the shape of the ceiling with the texture as well will also be a good key to what I'm going to do next um, which is bond it out straight and I always bond um, textured ceilings out and uh, just find it a lot easier now this one isn't the heaviest I've came across in my time plastering but it's by far the lightest as well and just for the demo showing you you can use a roller also but I do find that the brush gets gets it much a much more even coverage and it's safer. But you can do a combination. You could roller it on and then use the brush to help spread it and just just really, really, really take your time. Make sure you get this. This is the most important um, part of it by far is getting your preparation done. Everything else will follow. I'll also drop a link to what could happen if you don't get your ceiling PVA properly or if you don't PVA at all and well practically it will fall down and I'll show an example of that so I am also using stilts in in this particular job I've also got everything covered up that needs covered up the floor any furniture that's in, in the room also um, I've also dropped that light fitting down so that's easier to pass around and the trowel that I will be using for the most of this job will be the refiner so another part of the preparation guys is it, it is hard to actually see cracks and joints on a textured and our taxed ceiling but if you do find them re-screw them at the joists make sure that the boards are tight and then obviously scrim tape the joints that you find or the cracks that you find now some jobs this job for a texture job was done very uniform quite neat their angles were brushed out 
Um, so the guys doing this knew knew exactly what they were doing, and I could not find the joints very easy. Um, but a, a couple that were the fay fay fine hurling cracks, I found them. That's another thing when you're PVN to keep an eye open for. When you are, you know, you may as well look for them then instead of just daydreaming and getting the PVN done. Keep an eye open, and then when you come to mixing your plaster, obviously when you have the sealing PVA, your self adhesive sticky scrim is not going to stick to it. So you will need to apply dabs of plaster, such as the way I'm doing it here, and get that sealing scrimmed up. And the reason you want to scrim it, it won't. 100% guarantee it's not going to crack but 9 times out of 10 it will not crack again um, so definitely re-scrim any cracks you see or any joints some some poor jobs some poor 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 stipple jobs I've noticed you can you can literally see especially when they've been painted you can see where all the boards are because they didn't coat it too well and you can see the ridges on the legs of the M, even if it hasn't cracked, you might be safer just giving it uh, a scrim tape anyhow. But um, so that being said, this is the way I go about it. And um, sometimes you might want to just cut the length and then press it into your plaster, and you'll find that you know it'll hold up a lot better. And as you can see, I don't have the weight of the whole roll on me now, so I can just press it on into the plaster and even go big and then cut it off smaller again. And of course this is my good skimming trail so it's razor razor sharp. But you will you will find this, you know, even if you don't want to mix your big bucket, if you're doing a big ceiling, you want to mix a wee half yellow builder's bucket and um, go ahead and do that just for the scrims. Um, the way I like to go over my PVA, I must mention this as well, is when it's sticky. Um, you'll find if if you are scraping down your texture or your R tech ceiling that you know it'll go a wee bit stickier because you've, you've opened it up and it'll be bare plaster also you know if it's safe to scrape down and sand down your artex definitely still wear a mask and goggles put your hood up cover all your your face as much as possible and don't stand directly under it same as when you're coating don't try and keep your head away from underneath the trowel so any drops isn't going into your face, into your lungs, in your mouth. So definitely keep covered up as best as possible when you are scraping. So definitely think I've covered the most of it. And like I said, I like my PVA to be sticky. And you will find if you scrape it that it will go sticky quicker. As you've opened up some of the plaster to the burr plaster. So now what I'm doing is I've got probably about two bags of bond mixed. And the Ruby drill mixed in, the wee battery powered one. Um, and it, it mixed it a lot better than I thought it would, as you know that that's way above its its pay grade to mix such a large tub. I think there's not sure how many liters of plasters in there, but it's at least a, buck, a bag and a half of bottom. So just dry powder ways, that bottom is there's what 35 kilograms of powder in there. Um, but now that just go ahead you coat your whole ceiling out and what i do is i straighten definitely paying particular attention to all the corners guys all your your angles getting them straight and what i'm using here is it's a tyzak spatula yes they are flexible but if you don't if you start off and you you can cut it as well if you don't hold it flat if you hold it flat you'll also smoothen it in but if you hold it out like like the way I start, you can have a look along the line, see what needs filled, and you can cut off any high spots with it as well. It it's flexible, but it's not it's not that on flexible where it won't cut back. And you can see there, right beside the window, a little bit of light there, how well it actually got it straightened in. This will be a better angle, as you can see, it's flattening it and then it's straightening it, and um, killing two birds with one stone and definitely pay particular attention to all your angles this will be the most important thing for your skim coating as when your bond coat here is straight uh, it'll make your skim coat just go on coat that much easier again you can 
if you're happy hard straight to get this and you're tidy at coating your skin then you won't need to straighten your skin but if you know if you are a DIYer or new to the trade which most of the videos are all aimed for of course then you might want to also do this with your second skim coat and just give it a quick check check all your angles with a straight edge or with a, a spatula like so and this one's a Tizak with a changeable blade as well so you know it's easy cleaned um, I'm just gonna walk it there's no pole attachment for, for this Tizak but I'm just gonna walk the middles in as well just to basically just trialing it in but checking if there's anything majorly wrong with the middle I will mix up more fill it in or if there's a mad bump I'm gonna have to start trying to take off but you should sort of even before you coat you can check all your angles with a big straight edge um, this one here is a 600 rule so it's perfect for straightening up these angles and the reason I keep going on about the angles is you do want to make sure you have a straight tidy ceiling especially around the angles if you're thinking about cornices and how well it's going to paint it'll all have a, a big big effect so basically after you get it all straightened up flattened in clean your angles down with a small tussle brush you, you can do that before or after this stage it doesn't really particularly matter as long as you don't hit your wall and your angle with this brush too much to dirty it up again um, I think the camera's getting a bit blurry here because how fast I'm working so but anyway what I'm doing here is I'm brushing the ceiling and what this does is this actually keys the ceiling up and it leaves slight lines they're not too heavy they're not too deep but what that does is that basically gives your skim coat grip it's it's a bond that will help it catch um, also the way I like to, to skim it I'll hopefully have a clip of this and I can show you the, the way I like to get it when it's just peppering when it's just browning I like to get it skimmed then but if you're not too sure about that you can let it go um, further you can let it go browner as if you go over if you skim over your bond and too quick you're going to get problems where your skim coat could set quicker than your bond and leaving the surface to sort of crack like a boiled egg um, which could leave you the bond issues later on where the ceiling could could drop also with a, a less, less negative one you could just get loads and loads of blisters which will drive you nuts trying to get them trialed out and making the ceiling acceptable for paint um, but as you can see here I've just picked one way and I've just walked it that way in total and you can see the difference there between the, the trialed in area and the brushed so it just gives a, a nice key you can also use your float and devil float it which is 100% acceptable so you can see there and I am getting my first coat of skim on and the ceiling has browned off by the time I've got round you know once once you're say 50-50 when it's browning you can start coating one end and by the time you, you get your first coat on it will be a lot straighter and that's the drill that has mixed everything up for this job both that large bucket of bonding and now this bucket of skim which not just quite as much skim used for the ceiling as there was for the bonding as the bonding <coughs> pardon me the bonding goes on a lot thicker and this is the second coat being applied again guys always 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 to coat your plaster unless you're doing something very small a small patch you know you can get it out and you can maybe get away with one coat but I fully recommend you always to coat um, even if you stick with a good habit of two coating even with the patches you'll find it'll f it'll fall through on everything but um yeah and the other good thing is when you hit over your bonding as it's setting is you tend to use a slight less bit of product as well it's very similar to the hard wall idea is if if it's dry it'll suck it in a wee bit more so you'll find that it'll take that extra wee layer it will eat that extra little bit more plaster and as you can see guys I'm trying my best here to reach I have the stilts I'm not using the hop up so I can't get a good stride 
But what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get into a bit of bit of stretch here. I'm trying to get a good length of skin child in. And you can see that obviously it may be harder for people who are starting, but you can see how neat I'm trying to keep it on here. I do have the advantage of the stilts, I do really recommend stilts, I think they're a lot handier. But like I said, the neater your coat, the easier this stage is, which is the first flattening. This first trial, you don't need any water for, for this stage. If you do, you need to hurry up because you're definitely lagging behind. So, of course, between all this, after you get your mix done, get your bucket cleaned up and your drill cleaned up. But now I'm just walking it. Again, another advantage of having the stilts. You can just walk straight lines. There's no hopping up and down off the hop ups. Um, but if the ceiling, you know, if the ceiling's small enough for a hop up, it'll probably be. I'd recommend a hop up, as you you'll see in some of my other videos of plastering a small ceiling. I just use a create and a hop up. Um, but I definitely recommend the stilts are a lot handier. The only thing is now when you are working in people's houses and you have dust sheets down. You gotta make sure them dust sheets are nice and tight, and you gotta watch every step as you can trip up over the dust sheets. But this is just the first flattening. The only reason you would need water here is just to clean your angles as you're going. Um, because the quicker you get on to cleaning those angles, the easier it will be. So what what I'm doing here, I'm just feeling up the plaster and um, giving it the touch test, and um, just use the tips of your fingers, give it a wee press. If it's still very, very wet, you might want to leave it another 10 minutes. But if you feel it firming up and the moisture leaving it a bit, obviously the bigger the ceiling, you're going to have to just go earlier anyway. Again, all these things will come with time and experience. The more time, the more more you go at the job, the more you'll know and the more you'll learn. Um, but definitely, you got to get your hands dirty. you got to touch it. you got to maybe try it in a wee area where it's maybe not just so important in the ceiling or the wall down where there's going to be kitchen cupboards or units and um, if it feels way too wet like your child's not having an impact you're still leaving lines just let it hang another 10 minutes you know go and wash something go clean up your water get something set up for the next time and um, before you, you you keep on trialing at it for no reason and um, you will just be wasting your time if you go too early but obviously if it's a bigger ceiling like i said you, you're gonna have to go a bit earlier than you normally would but you can see again, I just pull out my my angle here, I clean it as I go, and then I will walk, I'll walk it then. So you can see how clean the angles are as I have started from, from the very first pass of getting them clean. And you can see I'm pulling out the angle, and I'm, I'm really really paying attention at this stage. I want to basically leave the ceiling as smooth and straight and hollow and holes free as much as possible now as the next couple of stages will be a lot harder to fill out anything and cut back so you want to even out the ceiling iron it out you want to get it as flat and neat as possible right now as obviously harder the harder the plaster gets the harder the job will become so the earlier you you get it right the easier things will be again go back to the angles the cleaner you get them now the easier they are to clean later on so that's that's it all pulled out guys so i would just then normally wet wet just slightly maybe half and half on where i had just pulled out from like so wet it with a brush walk it and that what that'll do is that will leave enough water on it for you to trial it off like so and then this will leave you a lovely lovely uniform finish you can see I still have a wee tiny bit you're not trying to take things off unless you need to um, but basically you're just using whatever's left on the trial to fill in and if you're walking and you tend to find a wee hollow or a hole you get it filled in and then you start to pass again so just another another wee show here of it and um, basically the tighter the ceiling gets the more you'll open your trowel up to cut at it and I also direct the water to the far side of the trowel so that to leave the side that I've trailed up 
finished smooth clean there's no water being left on basically my right hand if you're looking at this now it'll be my left hand your right hand side i leave no water on that side of the ceiling it's getting all forced towards the windows here as you can see not only it, the, the child's slightly angled both ways you don't have to maybe angle it just as much as me but just angle it enough where you are throwing the water that direction so yes it's it gets very repetitive at this stage guys and it really does um, but again I just can't emphasize enough of fill them in you can see them and putting plenty of plaster into there must be a wee hole or maybe a scratch it or something with the trowel as that does happen you will you will accidentally mark the ceiling but you gotta get them filled in and the tighter the plaster gets the less you want that to happen so here we are back to the start again for another wet trowel um, just make sure at this stage your angles are very very clean and you can see what trowel do I have now is the Rafina Superflex 3 again I'm still looking for any imperfections to fill and cut away there but basically this is I'll probably just give it a wee dry run after this one this is the, th the third pass and um, the second wet trail and I find this Rafina Superflex 3 that you can't hit a wee bit earlier um, or a wee bit later it doesn't really matter it's, it's a wee bit more of an all rounder trail I think somebody was saying them saying they're like the equivalent of a midi flex, whatever. I'm not sure what that is, but it is a lot stiffer than um, other flex flexi trails. But again, it's the same routine, the same same thing. You're starting from one corner, pulling it out. Yeah, you'll find that you will speed up now if you've went very neat the trail trails before the passes before. Um, you will find you'll speed up a wee bit more and again there's a put the money maker away cap it nice, nicely wrapped up so it don't get any chips you want to protect the edges of your trials guys because scores and chips will drive you crazy in this game so basically this, this is enough to finish the ceiling there's no real necessary need to polish it off although I always do and it's it does look a wee bit nicer with a slight shine. It feels nicer as well. You know it's all closed in then. It's a double check of whether or not there's any dirty watermarks or holes. It's just an extra double check. But basically with this trial guys, you've got to be finishing the ceiling. you got to make sure you have it 100% at this stage. Um, you know, you have to... You will find you'll speed up if your trials were tidy beforehand. Um, you're always looking to make it easier for yourself um, but you will find that you know this 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 will speed up if you're tidy then but this basically this is it guys that's this is the ceiling finishing at this point and that is how I plaster over Artex and make the ceiling smooth again of course there's other options but this is a tried and tested method by myself and over the 17 years of plastering it hasn't actually failed me yet fingers crossed but so there you go guys it's it's a very detailed video i appreciate your attention and your time and i hope you've enjoyed it and hope you're looking forward to the next videos <laughs>